Hi everybody, this is Cindy Cashmere at C2C Gallery and we're at home. And today we're gonna talk to two clay artists. One is Corey McCrory, and my tongue always trips over her name every time I say it, and Julie Devers. They are both clay artists. One is located in Illinois, one is located in Southwest Michigan. They are full-time artists. Um, let's see. Uh, what else do I have? So why don't I do this? Um, Corey, why don't you unmute yourself and why don't you say hi to everybody? Hello. Hi, everyone. It's a and gorgeous Corey, day here today. How hot is it? 84. Much warmer than us. I think we're just in the mid 70s. That's what we had yesterday. <laughs> I spent the entire day in the garden. Nice. And Julie, why don't you stop in and say hi? I'm in Goebbels, Michigan, and I'm sitting outside, and this is my studio, the pole barn where I have my kiln right behind, and I apologize if you hear cars go by. <laughs> it's not a busy road, though. That's all right. Um, let's see here. So, you know, it's interesting. In March, we were a, so we were a brick-and-mortar um, gallery for about 10 years, and then we became an online gallery so that we could expand our audience. Since March, we are now selling to 29, um, well, we have customers now in 29 states. So that's, um, it's been pretty amazing that we are, we are gaining some uh, new clients and uh, they're loving meeting our artists and seeing the artwork. And I thought today what I would do is, is, so I'm drinking out of a wood fire cup of Julie Devers and it's quite pretty. I can't turn it upside down because I actually have coffee in it. And then I have a glass of water uh, in a goblet of uh, Corey's and it's very fun. The other day we were going through pictures and Sarah and I found a uh, photograph from one of our customers that had six or seven of these goblets in all different colors. It was very, very fun. So I thought I'd go in and um, ask you some questions that are just more, you know, a little bit personal ones and then we'll just talk, start talking about pots, which is something that the three of us do love. Um, so, Corey, um, do you remember the first R-rated movie that you ever saw? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, I, I know, I think so. Uh, Saturday Night Fever. Oh, fun. And I, I was in high school, probably not old enough to go. And my girlfriend with me was younger than me. And my dad, I guess, he had no idea what he was doing to bring us to this movie. <laughs> and halfway, partway through it, I realized, oh my gosh, I probably just made a big mistake because <laughs> we're way too young for this movie. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, we did it. Uh, we had got a little bit of grief from my girlfriend's uh, parents and we survived and had a good story. <laughs> cool. Hey, Julie, do you remember what movie uh, was your first R-rated movie? Not at all. I think I transitioned from, oh, like those teen movies, you know, that you'd go to when you were pretty young, and my friend and I would always go to the movie theater, and then all of a sudden I had this, like, seeing those really creepy movies, like, omen and exorcist and stuff like oh. that. <laughs> and those are yeah you know, and actually i didn't know saturday night fever was r-rated so i probably remember seeing that too but now i i honestly don't come on cindy we're old we don't remember <laughs> i know i am right so um what about uh <laughs> the first concert you ever went to do you, um julie i'll just stay with you for a second so do you remember the first concert yeah I remember my friend and I went to see the Beach Boys. Oh, fun. And shortly, yep, and then shortly after that, I, you know, like transitioned into Boston, you know, and then it was all rock and roll shows. So I grew up in South Bend, and all the shows were always at Notre Dame. So it was very convenient to get out there, and even before we could drive, well, actually, I went to the Beach Boys, someone could drive, my friend could drive, so, yep. Cool. Corey, do you remember which one? Yep. What was your first uh, concert? Uh, I know, well, I went to a lot of concerts when I was a kid because my parents were hippies. <laughs> so I can't really remember the, you know, who we went to see all the time. But as a 
teenager, um, I, my first concert that I went to was a Grateful Dead concert. Oh my God. And it was probably very, like the last couple of tours they were doing. And it was quite an experience. <laughs> Yeah. The first uh, night I thought I could go and buy tickets. No, you can't buy tickets to a Grateful Dead concert on the night of a Grateful Dead concert. Um, but uh, we spent a lot of time outside. But the second night I did manage to get tickets. So that's that was my big experience. Wow, cool. So, um, so Corey, so I, I had many a nights, Corey, walking around going like this myself. Need one, need one. So I did tours also. <laughs> So we share that in common. <laughs> so when you're working in your studio today, um, all of us, each of us are lucky because we each have our own private studios. What kind of music do you like to listen to while you work, uh, Corey? Oh, I really like Ben Harper. And uh, I could listen to him for a long time. Then I bounced to... Um, soundtracks to across the universe i love that one uh to romeo and juliet and um oh moulin rouge i can sing along in the studio and it's just a blast oh julie? and abba abba is fun <laughs> oh yeah julie what's your favorite music to listen to and most of the time I have, sorry, there goes a the car. Um, most of the time I have NPR on in the studio. And then usually when I'm loading kiln, I'll create, I'll create something like Wilco or Grateful Dead or something like that. So, and then at night, our local public station has jazz on. And so that's always, and it always seems like it's more just everything's in the background to me. So. Okay. Yeah. I know that if I have to really think I can't really listen to a podcast, if I'm throwing on the wheel, I can actually, because, you know, I can, for some reason that seems like you can really listen to something in depth and throw. But if I have to really think about what I'm making or trying to put together a new form, I have to have just maybe classical music or jazz in the background, that kind of thing. Um, let's see. What's your favorite artwork right now? Is it, and is it artwork, like for me, um, I'll have favorite artwork that's 2D, but then I'll have favorite potters or favorite clay artists. So why don't we instead, why don't we ask, who's your, what's your favorite clay artist, Corey, um, that you just love to see their work? Sorry, through your curveball, you're, you're muted. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh boy. There's so many that I really like. Um, Kenyon Hansen is making some great work these days. And I fell in love with his work. Oh, about eight or nine years ago. I used to say I could just crawl up in his wear shelves and cuddle with his pots. Oh, wow. I have to look up his name. They're wonderful. I also liked Lisa Clegg. I mean, who doesn't? They're beautiful. Julie, who's your favorite clay artist right now? Or the work that really resonates with you? Well, I mean, I go back to my like kind of godfathers of Volgus and right, Don Wrights. Um, you know, once they're in your soul, they're there. Um, I think contemporary people, it's really interesting that what Instagram has done because it's introduced us to each other so much. Uh, yeah, that's really true. So for me, there's an artist um, in Italy that's working in paper clay that I think is phenomenal. Um, and I just really enjoy looking at it. And then um, there's a, a British potter, Carolyn Hearns, I believe her name is. And she's working on pots that she's being very painterly and painting um, abstract paintings around the surfaces of tall vases and things. And now, Julie, are you back able to hear us again? You're still muted. Yeah. I am. I'm sorry. Um, I think, like, my biggest influence is because my work is so much about just the material, that that's what I really look at. I love 
as opposed to pain, painterly surfaces, just more like the tooth of the clay and what's happening with the clay itself and the materials and the process. Okay. So, um, so both Corey and Julie work in clay and they go at it entirely differently. So Corey's work is fun. It's colors, it's texture, it's hand built typically. And Julie's work is quiet and very traditional. A lot of Asian related type of forms and lines and simple um, details that you have to pay attention and um, be aware of them and makes you consider them. Um, but I believe both of you started traditionally. Isn't it true, Corey, that you did start as a traditional potter? You did do weekend sales, throwing pots, traditional forms, right? <laughs> Corey? <laughs> We're having a lot of technical difficulties today. <laughs> um, Corey, are you still Wouldn't here? Wouldn't we just love to be in a gallery just standing around talking? <laughs> Don't we, we miss would. those days? <laughs> we would. So Julie, while you've been, you've had kids at home and you've been working on things, what um, are you working on making right now? Are you just in full production mode or are you thinking about new forms? There's a little pause just because of, you know, lack of shows. I still sell a lot either um, through my, my studio here or art shows. And so it just seems like there's a pause. And I think, you know, it's tough for right now, communicating with people and getting the word out about your work. Um, I did do a wood fire, unloaded a wood firing last weekend. Um, fired with a friend of mine. It was a new kiln that I had never fired before. And the results were a lot different from what I'm used to. So, you know, glassier surfaces, a um, little bit different. It doesn't have the same depth, I felt like that, you know, like the cup you're holding there. Um, so not necessarily new forms, but I think as a production potter, you're always just sort of restocking. So, you know, whether it's new batter bowls or new gravy boats or new butter dishes or new platters or restocking the casseroles. Um, you know, there's always that. So, you know, I, I don't know if Corey feels the same way, but it's almost like, boy, my shelves are full and where is all this work going? So, you know, we'll send it to Cindy, right? <laughs> we'll get, we'll get it out there, you know, and show it in its best environment, you know, so. Yeah, I know I personally have time making more work when I still have a lot of work sitting on shelves. I mentally just, I have a hard time building up inventory and being okay with that. I'm much better with feeling like I'm out of almost everything, so I better start making again. Corey, are you with us? Corey, you have to unmute yourself. <laughs> Well, Julie. Um, hey, have any of your kids, Julie, started doing anything with pottery or are you still? Um... No, Claire, Claire was making some jewelry about two years ago and she actually did a little art fair and used a little TV tray for, <laughs> so, but no, otherwise they're, they're more in the musical end of things and still the arts, but, um, but going back to what we were just talking about, I always remember seeing Betty Woodman back in it was like 88 89 she did a lecture and she always she started off her slide talk of i want to show you the most recent work and go backwards from there because you should always be the most excited about your recent work so you know going back to that idea of how do you keep working and how do you stay fresh i think you have to look at the most recent work and say where is this going to take me so I so always think you, about Betty. <laughs> do you have any pieces that uh, you want to show us? Do you want to make us dizzy? I have to go make us I'll dizzy. Go go back to the <laughs> yeah. Or do you want to do you want to um, walk away, stay set up there, and go get some and bring them to us? Yeah, I could do that. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to flip over and I'm going to. 
Okay. I'm going to talk a little bit about Corey's work. So Corey McCroy, like I said, she works in a clay and she used to throw on the wheel and she is a hand builder. Um, what she does is she likes to recycle. Um, she also loves to garden. And so what she did was um, anytime one of her neighbors or friends would go to McDonald's and get a cup holder, she would uh, take it from them and shred the paper and then uh, add water to it and take a blender and just um, basically blend it, blend it till it's all just paper fibers. And then she adds it back to her clay body. Now it's a lot wetter. So she has to put it out on plaster to let it set up and dry a bit. So then you could wedge it, which is just like kneading uh, bread. And then um, when it's the right consistency, she can roll it out into thin slabs and then start creating her forms. So she uses all kinds of texture rollers and things to um, add interest, make lines, make dots, make zigzags, do all kinds of things. And what I like about it is that her work is always very, very neat and tidy. And um, you'll be seeing uh, more of her work um, as we go. Um, Julie looks like she's back and she has some of her pots. So Julie, let's see if we can see them. I'm here, but I can't, I don't know if you can see me or hear me. I can. I can see you, Julie, but you have to just unmute. There you go. Am I up? Oh, okay. You are up. I feel like I'm at a picnic here. <laughs> so I was saying that um, the wood firing we just unloaded, and this is a tea bowl out of that firing. And I apologize if the color's not great. But one of the things that uh, just the details of wood firing, I notice things like this, the glassiness and how, and it's all about how the kiln cools. And so when the kiln cools quickly, those glazes brighten up and turn glassy. Um, this has a really beautiful interior. And I know, Cindy, you have some of these tea bowls um, at the gallery there. And just, it's all, to me, it's all about how it feels in your hand and how it changes it within your hand as you rotate it. And it, it's just that sensory experience. Um, so that just came out. I've been just doing some real simple uh, in a press mold. And it's really fun for me to just play with pattern. And so this is just a, like a simple serving dish. Again, it just the simplicity of it is really nice. And then um, using the wadding marks to keep it up off the kiln shelf. So this was fired upside down. So I'm repeating the pattern here with these little handles. So this is just an idea and process and it goes along with, you know, doing plates and, and the composition of a plate, um, which comes somewhat from the slip decoration, somewhat from other pots sitting on there and creating, you know, these, these little marks. So That's those are just some of those ideas that are generated. So and I do have a glaze. Do you want to see the glaze? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. Nice little, nice little gravy boat. So uh, again, uh, just altering that rim. Um, and the like you always talk about with my work is just the simple glazes. And so this just has a simple uh, clear glaze. Uh, goes kind of gray. And then some of the slip decoration on it. So and a little plate. So yeah. And people should notice that her plates and her bowls and gravy boats and things, they all fit together really, really well. She makes sure that the base of yeah. the picture fits within yep. the recess in the plate. Not going anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the craftsmanship that, you know, you think about, it's like, why put a big product out there, you know? So if someone's going to be using that. Right. So Corey, Corey is back. And I'm not certain I'm if she... Back. Yeah, good. Can you show us anything that you're working on or that's new? Um, sure. Let's see. Um, <laughs> what's, what's new? Okay, yeah, let me grab a couple. Let's okay. See. 
Should I bring you with me? If you want, or you can bring it to us. That's okay. So Corey's always very, very creative. She's always coming up with new things and she likes to play with fun. Like she's done teapots that have dance go clogs on their feet and uh, she's done dress shoes on teapots and all kinds of fun things. And it's kind of like the old, was it the old woman who lives in a shoe with all the children she didn't know what to do? Isn't that the rhyme, something like that? All righty. We have, speaking of, we have a nice little teapot. Look at those shoes. Look at those shoes. Everybody needs a teapot with red high heels and stilettos. Definitely. So let's see, the new guys, I've been having a blast with my salt and pepper shakers. A and we're gonna have blast. some of those. Uh-huh. Yes. You have some of those now. And this one, for example, um, my brother has cacti, cactus. Mm -hmm. And I just thought this really, uh, the colors and the little flowers and just all the little textures I have seem to work really well. So I was super inspired by all sorts of different succulents and cacti. No, yeah, they do. And look then like of course, Everybody likes a bird, so the little birdies. And okay, so question. New. One minute. So, sure. question. Your little birds and your little flowers, do you have little um, molds for each of them? These are all done individually by hand. Wow. Um, the little birds, actually, I don't even need a tool. I just use my fingers for them, okay. which is interesting. But, yeah, it would be so nice if I could just have a little press mold but I'm just not that organized. <laughs> so yeah, all these little things are all hand done. Okay, very cute. And let's see. Um, this is something I'm going to be making soon. This is my little uh, clay sketch. Let's see, this side. I have to go back in and do a little bit of a redesign so it pours a little bit better, but uh, I think it's uh, not too shabby. I like that a lot. I'm going to show you a comparison. So both of you, so this is one of Julie Deaver's pictures. Same thing, same kind of like indent. You've got that same kind of indent on yours. Yeah. And it has this nice belly with a nice lip. Nice little space for your fingers to go in. Yeah. And it just, they look so proud, don't they? They do. And what I love about it is that I think both of you really do show that you've been making pots for a long time and yeah. it doesn't just happen. This took 20 plus years for both of you to be able to make these forms. Absolutely, lots Julie, of practice, lots of mistakes. And Julie Devers is pu pulling up again the, uh, I think the other picture or the- Yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so what, um, Corey, what else do you have? Oh, uh, let's see, I have, uh, did I ever send you coffee pour overs? No. They are so fun, but so time consuming. Okay. Lots and lots of work in these guys. Um, let's see if I go this way. I, I had a blast with these, but yeah, very fussy to balance that right onto this little area there. Um, you want to make sure it pours through, not too quickly, not too slowly, uh, and it needs to fit nicely. Right. And I made these to fit all of my mugs. Wow. So very nice. And each one comes with a little, a little um, round tray to sit it on, which I oh. left on the other table. And what are you charging <laughs> for those? Uh, Boy, yeah, these are these are in the eighty to one hundred and ten price. But there's the little so when it's still dripping and you don't want to wait, you've got some place to put it. See all the sense of details. You figured it all out, which I think is really great. Yeah, it's a lot of. I I truly enjoy the puzzle of figuring <laughs> out how to put all these things together. Julie Devers, have you ever? Corey, done can I ask 
Can I, I was going to ask Corey, do you make those, or is it a specific pour to go on the cup? Are those um, like the image, do they go together? They can. I have three basic types of things with my imagery, and one is the clouds and the storms. Um, I also have a crow image and then the textures. And so I make them in those different styles. So my question yeah, was- I just got, I had someone call me recently and, and asked about a pour over. And so I was kind of toying between, do you just make one that you know will go on any cup or do I want to, you know, make a whole set so those two pieces go together, which I love doing. I love putting those right. two pieces together. So yeah, I think, I and, think mine and the pour overs quite a few. Yeah, pour overs are really popular right now. <laughs> so they are. So so Julie, you are getting asked to make those, and Corey, you have been making them. So yes. my question to both of you is, is do you think it's worth the time to figure them out? It's a long-term product that people will continue to want to purchase. Um, I think so. It's almost like playing with toys in the morning. <laughs> you get to have, you know, your little coffee set up and just the act of using a little coffee pour over is so much fun from, you know, get the beans ready and get all your coffee going and get the water at just the right temperature. And it's just kind of fun to wake up and do that. Mm, okay. So Julie. It kind of adds, it adds to the ritual. I think maybe it adds to the ritual of morning coffee. So. I like that idea. So then Julie Devers, does that mean you're kind of thinking about doing pour overs and thinking about making some? Well, I made a couple, so they haven't gone through a firing yet. And mm -hmm. of course I need to test them, you know, right. just to work out those little technical kinks. Um, you know, like Corey said, how big to make the hole, how fast do you want it to drip and all that, so. So here's a question for both of you. Um, this could be a really nice Christmas idea so for Christmas gifts, if it works. <laughs> I know it's easier said than done. <laughs> the, this whole little kit makes a wonderful Christmas gift. All right, so we've kind of gone around and around about all kinds of different things. Is there something that each of you would like to add or talk about? Um, you know, we keep trying to figure out how, what's the best way to communicate with people. I know people really love meeting the artists. I know they love seeing a little bit about your life, where you work. I know it's, technology is a little bit difficult. So let's see, Corey is unmuted right at the moment. So I'm gonna ask Corey if there's anything that she was thinking about today before we started that she wanted to share. Oh boy. Um... Geez, that one I didn't even think about, huh? I think that the way things are changing right now, that if you can't go with the flow or bend like the tree, you're not going to have a very good time in the future. Yeah, Everything's think... so different now, so we're all learning lots of stuff. Yeah, it's true. Julie Devers, what do you think? Well, I think one of the things that the last two or three months of being confined in our homes, um, and made us reassess what we have and what we use and what's special to us. And I think that's really important, you know, to look around. I mean, how many of us have decided to purge, whether it's cleaning out that closet or, you know, cleaning something and getting rid of. So I think now's the time to, you know, really look at it. And, you know, we're in the we're in the world of making things that we want to make people's life better and more enjoyable. So I hope people take advantage of that and say, you know, it was a, a challenging couple months. It's still mil maybe in the future, but you know, how can I make that morning coffee better? Um, how can I make that, you know, sitting down with my spouse and having an intimate dinner, how can I make that better? And I really believe pots are, are the way to do it, you know, so because it, it brings a part of us, and our thinking and our relationship with the world into your home, so. 
You know, it's funny when, you know, we can't have big dinner parties or anything right now, but um, we can have a few people, you know, you can have another couple, you can have six people or eight people. At least they're saying that it's reasonably okay. Um, and I, I love watching people's reactions when they haven't been to my house before and you set your table and it's all handmade dishes and it, people are just amazed at how warm it feels and how friendly and you know, the three of us, we're used to handmade on our tables all the time, but for a lot of people, they never understood why it, it becomes just a part of your life. Right? Absolutely. Um, it's so funny you say that because when people do come in my house for the first time, I will lead them towards the back of the house to the studio and I lose them in the living room because I have so much artwork up from other artists and pottery from other potters that it's, I guess it's just, it's really nice to be able to live this way, yeah. to have all of this work around me. Yeah, definitely. So now if we can just get this next generation into buying handmade, we'll be doing great. I, I was just going to say that, you know, and especially with my kids, it's like, you know, you, you just hope that they carry that with them, you know, because that's all they've used their whole life too. So, yep. Right, right. Well, I oh, want we'll get them. Absolutely. We'll get them, Cindy. <laughs> yeah, that's the goal. Um, so anyways, I want to thank you for your time. Thank you for your patience and figuring out the technology. I love doing this. It's been a long time since I've seen either of you. And um, hopefully we can do it again soon. Um, just recap a little bit, anything that you've seen in this recording, um, you can go to our website, um, C2C, letter C, number two, letter C, gallery.com. And uh, we have a lot of artwork by both of these gals. Um, and if you wanna see the fronts, the backs, insides, the bottoms, just call us, send an email, and we will help you out. Um, so anyway, have a good evening. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.